The rustling autumn comes in, and with the oncoming winter, mine has to stay at the cathedral during the harsh frost instead of making it home every day. Her printing work is bustling with copies sliding out, but she would need supplies to prepare for her stay at the church. After she gets scolded by Benno for not giving it importance, she ends up selling some of the books to him for cash. <laughs> After all, he's a clever businessman. Nevertheless, her book soon caught the attention of the Ink Guild Master. He notices the ink on her paper once the books circulate in the wealthy nobles. He's enraged at the prospect of someone else taking his business category. However, Benno signs the ink rights over to him to avoid conflict. He makes sure not to have her present there for her safety. Meanwhile, Mine's fitted for her new priestess dress by Corina, who's now considerably pregnant with Otto always jumping at his toes. Benno and Mine are also intercepted by a blacksmith, Jonathan, asking her to become his patron since nobody likes his detailed picky stuff. It immediately tickles the Mine brains, as she asks him for metal printing in exchange for becoming his patron. Though all seems well, the prying ink guild master isn't satisfied and goes as far as to harass Luke to get information about mine. Immediately, Benno suggests Mine seclude at the cathedral early for her own safety, making her leave her family earlier than expected. And that sucks. Upon Fran's suggestion, they keep the circumstances of her early seclusion secret from Delia, who's still closely associated with the High Priest. Mine begins her sad days alone in the cathedral, while Gunther is determined to keep this girl safe. Mine isn't a girl who stays idle for long. Just a day passed at the cathedral and she's already on to new activities. Fran is shocked when he finds her teaching Delia arithmetic. She happily reveals that she's planning on educating the children at the orphanage by teaching them to read and write. Soon Lutz comes to visit her, and she longingly rushes down to hug him. Poor girl wishes to be hugged too. Adorable. Tuli comes to visit her, but her departure only leaves little Mine more homesick. Poor girl. Not long before, Benno arrives with Mark bringing along her priestess dress. The knightly order's commander, Karstedt, has also come. However, with his usual fatherly scold, Benno tells Mine to not be a simpleton since it's clear they've summoned him for more than just delivering a dress. Soon in a serious meeting, Karstedt, Ferdinand, Benno, and Damuel converse. They talk about the looming danger from the Ink Guild master, Wolf who seems to have dangerous connections and is a genuine threat. They assign Damuel as Mine's bodyguard. Ferdinand grabs the chance and reveals his suggestion to have Kurdstedt adopt Mine for her safety, but the sound of it immediately fires Mine up. Mana floods out as Ferdinand quickly uses a magic tool to drain it, carrying her hurriedly to his office. Mine continues to freak out and be overwhelmed with Mana at the thought of being separated from her family, making Ferdinand hug her. Affectionately, she climbs into his lap to feel better, and he makes her understand her circumstance. In the end, he tells her to have her family spoil her as much as she wants till the age of 10, after which Ferdinand will no longer listen to her wails and protests. Mine is happy with the decision for now. Daniel flies to the cathedral, starting duty as Mine's personal bodyguard. He's introduced to everyone, including Lutz and Tuli, who are now coming by to learn to read and write together with the orphans. Daniel feels quite loved, considering the higher nobles often treat him harshly. Behind her back, though, Delia continues to report developments in Mine's life life to the high priest. The dedication prayer ceremony soon arrives and Mine is taken to the prayer room with the grails that she fills with mana together with Ferdinand. However, during one of their prayers, the high priest comes in, tumbling more grails upon her to fill. She has no choice but to oblige. And, oh. Fatty is such a snob. Soon with Daniel, she makes her way to Johan, who finally presents her with the metal printing blocks. Escalated over the roofs, she jumps, announcing he's Johannes Gutenberg, the very person who brought the revelation by inventing the printing press. Her excitement takes over so much that the poor girl collapses due to her sickly health. Well, at least she's happy. But all is not good. Once the snow melts, Mine asks Ferdinand to allow her to go home, but he has worse news. It seems that matters are more complicated. Wolf has now died, and there seems to be a bigger person of noble heritage after her. He soon calls her parents, telling them the situation. Seeing the circumstances, Effa and Gunther allow Mine to stay in the cathedral for the spring, while also agreeing, sadly, to her adoption by the age of 10. Nevertheless, spring soon arrives, and as Mine and Ferdinand prepare for the spring prayer, a quite troublesome, yet cool, blue-robed priest comes into Mine's life. Sylvester. Sylvester is like an annoying big brother who immediately jumps to treating Mine like a plushie, driving her so annoyed that she gets overwhelmed with mana. <laughs> that earns him a knock from both Kurtzstedt and Ferdinand. Soon they board the magical beasts, flying over to different farmer districts. Of course, Sylvester lands in all glory, showing off his cool moves, and this guy's pretty interesting. Mine executes the prayer well, filling the grail with her mana and providing the farmers as the priests bless them. Once the sun sets, they come to the resting place. Mine dresses up quite nicely 
nicely, making even Kurtzstack compliment her that she looks quite noble. Soon the diners are served, but mine's chefs have prepared it separately for her. Of course, seeing her elite food, the naughty Sylvester starts drooling and asks mine for her chefs by the end of dinner. Cleverly, mine says that she can't sell them over, and if he wishes for good food, he can become a patron for the restaurant they plan to open. Genius. With that night ending, they entertain themselves before resuming their travel. They stop by a noble, Viscount Gerlock, who seems quite doubtful to Ferdinand. He immediately asks mine to stay hidden behind a robe. However, that night, as they stay in Kurtzstadt's mother's house, two bandits break into the estate, attempting to kidnap mine. Luckily, they're caught, but end their own lives to evade trouble. But that's not the only trouble coming their way. On their way back from the spring prayers, Fran and Rosina's carriage also gets attacked by foreign farmers and strange mana. Though Karstadt and Sylvester manage to handle the situation, their magic wipes everything due to Mine's blessing, leaving them with no clues. As Mine lies in recovery, Ferdinand worries that there's a foreign noble involved in the drama. Ferdinand suspects there are devouring soldiers involved. For now, they return to the cathedral, where Rosina and Frank thank Mine for prioritizing their lives during the attack. She had insisted on their safety. Mine enters the cathedral, relieved that she's back, only to see their next problem, Sylvester. Of course now he's around. He insists on having a tour of the cathedral, the orphanage she's revolutionized, and her printing workshop. Ferdinand makes sure to accompany her so he doesn't annoy her too much. Nevertheless, she takes Sylvester about the orphanage, showing him all the card games she's come up with, and then to the printing shop. She shows around the new printing methods, while Ferdinand quietly teams with a mountain of questions. Soon Sylvester is introduced to the ever father merchant, Benno, but his demeanor makes a man like Benno start praying to the gods. Sylvester talks with Benno regarding the chefs and restaurant, which leaves him quite worried and pinching Mine's cheeks for getting him in so much trouble. By the end of the day, as Sylvester leaves, he gifts Mine a protection charm and asks her to summon him in time for help. No, see? He's a big bro, and just as annoying as one too. Soon, Mine sits with Ferdinand for the interrogation. He warns that making books houses many nobles' jobs, and her printing invention might cause trouble since it will take their work. She should wait until she's adopted by Karsted to evade any harm. He's also kind enough to let her family visit her home, where a heavily pregnant Effa waits for the baby to arrive. The time soon comes, and Effa gives birth to a baby boy named Camille, making Mine a big sis. However, Delia is still snitching to the high priest about her life, and it seems a doubtful noble will soon visit. In a suspicious meeting, the high priest sits with three nobles, Vice Countess Daldorf, Vice Count Geral, and Count Bindwald of a neighboring country, Arensbach. They discuss the failed attempt to kidnap Mine and put a strange ball before the priest, insisting him to help him get rid of Mine from his life and a cell to them. So the snobby fatty has been involved in all of this. Ferdinand was right about the foreign involvement. Unbeknownst to all the trouble boy behind her back. Mine couldn't care any less. She's overcome by her little bro Camille and the craze to make picture books for him. Even blabbering to Benno, who's already fed up with Otto and Karina welcoming their baby girl, Renette. Entering the cathedral, she's presented with another abandoned baby left to them. Mine does her best, feeding him goat milk and assigning turns to her attendants to take care of him, including Delia, who she hopes will forget about her concubine dreams if she's occupied raising a little bro. Mine names the boy Dirk and welcomes him to the family. Soon on a trip back home, Mine is introduced to Bierce and his daughter Hady, the new Ink Guild master since Wolf is now dead. However, they ask Mine for assistance since the work is hard for them. Mine soon unfolds her wish to create colored ink, making Hady jump out of her chair. It looks like we have another Mine now. Hades passionate about making colored inks and starts chatting with Mine until Benno and Bierce have to control the girls. Soon in the ink workshop, they mix oils and pigments to make new colors, and Hades excited is over the roof. Mine finds her unique, like her. Back at the cathedral, as Dirk wails, Delia brings him some milk, only to see that he's spotted and burning up. Delia soon informs Mine of Dirk's condition. However, the spots in the burning have vanished, leaving none to be witnessed by Mine. But once he starts crying again, the spots return, and Mine can feel him burning. His burn reminds her of her own mana burning. She doubts he has the devouring as well. For now, Mine stays quiet, asking for an urgent meeting with the head priest and calling Lutz. Once Lutz comes, he 
he asks him to bring her the Tao fruit, a fruit that suppresses mana. Soon, she meets Ferdinand, revealing her concerns. It shocks him, and he agrees to come by and measure Dirk's mana later. However, there's a problem. If Dirk indeed has the devouring, the situation's complex, and he needs to be given off to a noble for survival. But Mine's worried that he'll be treated ill. Soon, Ferdinand comes by to check Dirk's mana level and estimates it's moderate. He indeed has the devouring. It saddens Mine, however, she cheers up once Ferdinand points out that she can make a contract with him once she becomes a noble when adopted by Kerstedt. For now, they must keep this a secret, especially since the High Priest is already out to get her. Mine's ink development seem to be going well too. They've made rich pigments with Haiti, but come at a block in development once they start turning black upon being mixed. Effa tells her of fixing agents to prevent the blackening, and Lutz and Gil soon get to it. Meanwhile, Dahlia seems to be getting closer and closer to Dirk, growing worried when he's away from her. She struggles to go to the orphanage due to her past and worries the same for Dirk. Mine returns to her, throwing a fit over learning of Dirk's adoption by nobles. Erupting in anger, Dahlia jumps onto Mine. Calmly, Mine explains to her that it's highly unlikely, and she had asked Ferdinand for the better of Dirk. Yet for now, he can be with Delia. At this, Delia calms down. Soon, Mine returns to her busy being. Benno's Italian restaurant opens, and I just realized how Italian of a name Benno is, while Miss Haiti, in her obsession, tries to infiltrate a painter's workshop to crack the colored ink recipe. However, with Lutz and Gil completing the fixing agent, the development block is soon overcome. Afterward, Mine visits Joan and orders a stylus for Gil and a toy for little Camille. A red signal goes up as they exit, indicating an emergency at the gates. Immediately, Daniel escorts Mine to her home's safety. At dinner, Gunther explains that a noble illegally tried to enter the city, making them signal to summon the knights. He's determined to keep Mine safe from any freaky nobles. Somewhere in the cathedral, the high priest loses his composure. <laughs> The fatty is bursting. Soon, Ferdinand sends the details to Gunther. He has suspected that the high priest is involved since the suspicious noble at the gates was summoned by him. Once Mine returns to the cathedral, they're met with the horrific news that Dirk has been given for adoption by the high priest. It seems that Delia had taken the matter to him. Immediately, Mine dismisses Delia as her attendant and is saddened that Dirk's out of her hands now. Fran also warns her about the high priest's mischievousness. With Mine in more danger, Thule and Lutz start coming to escort her home together with Damuel. They reach the gates and meet Otto, who tells them of the same suspicious noble entering the city. Gunther is in search of him, immediately Damuel sends off a signal, but before he can realize, someone snatches Thule and Mine from behind. The two men snatch the girls away in a bag, and are chased by Otto and Damuel, who rush to save the girls. In time, Gunther hears the chaos, catching up to the kidnappers and yanking Mine out. However, one of them places a knife at Thule's throat. Immediately, Mine burns in mana, making the man collapse, and while Damuel handles the situation, Situation, Gunther and Otto carry the two girls to safety. However, before they leave, Mine remembers the gift given to her by Sylvester and uses it to call for help. Thule is rushed to Benno for safety while Mine is taken to the cathedral by Gunther and Damuel. Once they arrive, Mine is told of Ferdinand's absence and the arrival of a suspicious noble who's, right now, adopting Dirk. Giving Mine a ring, Damuel, Gunther, and Fran try to escort Mine to safety only to run into the high priest, Delia holding Dirk and the noble, Count Bindwald. Delia announces to Mine that Dirk's been adopted when Bindwald reveals that it's not adoption but a devouring servitude in exchange for Mine. It leaves Delia baffled as she realizes she's been played. Snitcher got a taste of her own medicine. Immediately, Bindwald and the High Priest's men attack Gunther and Mine. The High Priest even goes as far as to use little Dirk's mana to attack her, leaving the baby unconscious. Mine is suddenly grabbed and almost forced to sign the contract when Gunther pushes her aside. She loathes Sylvester for not coming in time. Suddenly, a door bursts open and out comes Ferdinand, and he had been there the whole time. He restricts the High Priest immediately, and seeing Sylvester's gift around Mine, tells tells her its importance. Ferdinand then faces Bindwald as Mine creates a shield, praying and protecting Gunther, Damuel, and Fran. As Ferdinand fights the crazy Count Bindwald, Sylvester finally arrives, telling Ferdinand to stop. Immediately, everyone stops and bows down to him as his attendant introduces him as Ob Ehrenfest. Wait, wait. He's the Lord Aaronfest of the Kingdom of Aaronfest. Mine is taken aback. With everyone bowing down to him, Bindwald and the High Priest start asking him to punish Mine. However, Sylvester clears that the gift given to Mine is actually an emergency adoption contract. Using it means she's Sylvester's daughter immediately. Therefore, they've attacked a Lord's daughter. He announces Bindwald as a criminal for attacking Mine and illegally entering the city of Aaronfest. The High Priest tries to convince Sylvester of his innocence.
innocence by calling Ferdinand names. It turns out Ferdinand is Sylvester's half-brother, and Sylvester immediately gives him a death sentence. Mine, though, manages to get Delia a lower punishment. Sylvester and Ferdinand then sit with Gunther, explaining the immediate adoption situation and asking him to bring his family instantly for the contract to be signed. Gunther rushes home, fetching them, leaving Lutz worried. As the family arrives, they're sat down for the process. Ferdinand and Sylvester explain they'd pose as if mine was Kerstet's dead third wife's daughter, and is now being adopted by Lord Aaronfest, Sylvester. However, the adoption from him means mine will no longer be able to meet her family. She reads the dreaded terms painfully, entailing how they shall act as if they don't know her from here on, and treat her as a noble. In tears for her safety, the family signs the contract, giving their heartfelt goodbyes. Mine raises her hands, blessing her family for protection for the last time. A great blessing that heals all those who are present, injured, or ill in the cathedral as she casts it. Mine now starts her life as Sylvester's daughter, Rosemine. And not only that, she's also the head of book printing for Aaronfest now. And that's the end of the video. As always, if you liked what you saw, subscribe to the channel. I'll be uploading a lot of videos just like this, so I'll see you at the next one. And God, I can't wait for another season of this show. It's so good!